Hi, this is Father Bill W. here in Austin, Texas, and I would like to welcome you to the podcast. Um, I am an Episcopal priest in long-term recovery, coming up on 48 years at the end of this month. So uh, kind of a very happy time and a, and a grateful time for me as well. A couple of short announcements before we get into this uh, particular episode. First thing I wanted to let you know is uh, we are doing a newsletter and if you are not already receiving a copy of that newsletter, if you just drop me a line and, and just let me know that, uh, I would be happy to get you onto our uh, newsletter list. And it'll keep you posted on uh, upcoming events and uh, stories and things that are happening vis-a-vis -vis, uh, two-way prayer. So uh, you can write me at uh, twowayprayer at gmail.com. Second announcement uh, is regarding our uh, workshops on the subject of two-way prayer. They've been proving really, really uh, popular. So we had almost 500 people on the last uh, workshop that we did on Zoom. And we've decided that going forward in the new year, starting on the second Saturday of each month, January through June, and we may extend it through the end of the year, but for those six months, on the second Saturday at 10 a.m. Central Time, we will be repeating uh, that workshop live. And so if you haven't uh, joined one of our two-way prayer uh, Zoom workshops, hope you'll do it. If you have, please encourage uh, friends or sponsees or other people in 12-step recovery to check it out. So um, we're growing those and, and having a really good time uh, meeting people as, as they share uh, their two-way prayers and, and learn the process. Final request is um, we are revising our two-way prayer website and want to make it a bit more interactive. Uh, um, and we're doing adding some films and things of that nature. And what I'd like to do is uh, have a group of folks, uh, maybe 10 or 12, uh, people who are doing two-way prayer, have been practicing it for a while, and that it's really made a, a huge difference in your life. We'd like to just get a group like uh, 10, 15 people of those together. And we're going to do it on a Saturday morning on the 26th of December. Uh, if you're in the UK, that is Boxing Day. So there's absolutely nothing going on anyway. <laughs> I spent a Boxing Day in the UK once and uh, uh, not much happening. So... Um, on the 26th, on a Saturday, if you're free and would like to join us, so we'll probably meet for about 45 minutes. Uh, if you just send me an email at twowayprayer at gmail.com, I'll send you the particulars. Particularly like to have people under the age of 40. Uh, that's uh, physical age, not sobriety age. But because uh, we want to make, you know, we want to really reach out to younger people who are out there and struggling with prayer and meditation and let them know that there is an exciting uh, way that you can approach this thing. So if you've had some experience with it and, and you want to help out, uh, please drop me a line and uh, I'll get back in touch with you as soon as I can. Uh, the series that we're doing right now is on spirituality and religion. Uh, a lot of, lots of people in the program uh, will say, I am spiritual, but I'm not religious, you know, Re really quick to, to add that. And so we, we want to do a, a, a series on, on that subject, how people come at that, uh, uh, that that's the recognition of it, you know, how, how, they, how they integrate it into their program. I understand the, the new edition of the big book is supposed to have uh, one of the stories is, is by an atheist. Uh, so I, I think that's actually a, a very good thing. I mean, this this door that we have to spirituality, it's got to be as wide open as possible. So um, uh, the next uh, uh, series, we'll, we'll be covering people from the Jewish uh, tradition, Islam. Uh, I like to get a Buddhist uh, recorded. And, and, and what I'm looking for there is how do people use their religion or no religion uh, when it comes to working their working a very spiritual program. So uh, um, lo looking forward to this series and hope hope you enjoy it. Our guest today is, is Kim. She is coming to us from Australia, from Brisbane, Australia. 
She works in a nature preserve. So uh, if you hear some exotic sounds in the background, uh, just kind of settle, settle down, put your pith helmet on, and off we go. So uh, let's get started. Kim, I want to welcome you to the uh, podcast and thank you for emailing me. Uh, we did a series on um, psychic changes. That was our last series. And you uh, responded and you said you had one of those puppies. Uh, I did. Yes, I think it was back in 2003. Is, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, to January 2003. And you heard a voice inside. I did. You I heard a, a voice. You had a conversation. You had a conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. So a complete what conversation. What was going on. Tell us what was going on and uh, what came of that. So I'd been going to AA for about two months and, um, you know, I just couldn't get it. I just couldn't stay sober and I was just really sort of at the end of my robe feeling very despondent about the whole uh, process um, and I'd really kind of thrown my hands in the air I suppose I had I'd been drinking and you know it wasn't particularly terrible it wasn't any worse or any better than any other episode I had had and um, I was feeling like I'm never going to get this. And I had woken up just feeling really awful, as you do, uh, so hungover. And um, I actually, this isn't live, is it? No. I'm just, no, looking, no, I'm just, I'm just looking at a giant goanna trying to climb a tree anyway I'll carry on so um yeah so I was feeling pretty awful and uh I was lying there in bed thinking to myself if you don't stop this you're going to die and then this voice said what if you don't what if you don't die what if you just go on and on and on and on ever? And I thought, oh, that'd be pretty awful. And then, um, you know, the conversation starts with the voice. And I say, yeah, but, you know, what am I going to do at my next, at my birthday? My birthday's coming up in March. How am I going to have a birthday without alcohol? And the voice says to me, if you're still drinking at your next birthday, it's going to be just as awful as the last one and the one before that and the one before that mm. and the one before that. And I said, oh, yeah, but what about Christmas and New Year? And so right, this is the 6th of January, so I'm already thinking about next year. And the voice said, sweetie, if you're still drinking next Christmas and next New Year, it's going to be just as awful as the last one and the one before that and the one before that and the one before that you know I hadn't spent Christmas with my family for years at this point and then I said oh because I was single unsurprisingly um and the, I said to the voice well how am I gonna like go out and meet somebody <laughs> And the voice said, oh, sweetie, you're already scraping the bottom of that barrel. You're, you're, uh, there's nobody nice for you in this condition. Yeah. And, and it was like this real, and then the voice just said, you're done. It's over. You can never drink safely again. And pretty much I had that white light experience I felt this sense of calm came over me this sense that I was very safe it was a really you know I had been overwhelmed with that feeling of impending doom and all of a sudden I felt very safe I felt very 
protected. Um, and I, the compulsion to drink me left and I never drank again. Wow. And you re remained active in the program? I've remained active in the, you know, of course I did all the things. Yeah. Um, you know, I did all of the things. I, I I actually was in New Zealand at the time and I came back to Australia about six weeks later and, you know, joined a home group, got a sponsor, got a position in the home group, uh, 90 meetings in 90 days. And when that was up, I did it again. Like I did all of the things. Right. Um, however, you know, as time went on, I came to see that, you know, the program alone, um, my willpower alone, I suppose, and not necessarily the answer because, you know, then it came time to quit smoking. I didn't have the same experience. Right. Um, you know, over the years I've tried to quit sugar. I don't have the same experience. And um, I mean, quite, eventually I can't quite control when it comes and when it doesn't. So uh, Right. Yeah. One of the reasons I wanted to uh, have you on the, the podcast, uh, Kim, is that you describe yourself as uh, an atheist. Uh, mm. I, I, I like yes. that maybe not a very good atheist, but you're an atheist. <laughs> so yeah, I'm... I want to know how has that been for you on your own spiritual journey? Yeah, so originally, you know, I was really open to the idea that there was some God because something extraordinary definitely happened to me. Like, it was perfectly, believe. I, I suppose it was plausible. I was willing to believe that there was a God. But what happened is I was still very caught in that idea that God, you know, issued prizes based on how good you were. So in early sobriety, it was kind of easy to feel like I was being rewarded because I was doing all of the things, going to meetings, working the steps as they're written in the big book, you know, being a good girl. And the rewards came pretty hard and fast. You know, I got my driver's license. I got a great job. I got an apartment. My family were talking to me. Um, you know, eventually I got a partner and we had a beautiful child. So it was kind of easy to think I am being rewarded by God for being good, mm -hmm. which was sort of what I had grown up believing, which is why I didn't really believe in God, because I thought God was only reserved for good people. So um, what happened with this sort of like, you get a prize, you get a prize, you get a prize kind of belief system around God is that when I experienced hardship that no longer made sense mm -hmm. so when I saw hardship happening for other people good people that didn't make sense yes. when I saw good things happening for bad people that didn't make sense so eventually I was kind of faking my belief in something that I really didn't believe in. I don't believe in a religious version of God and sort of never did. No offense. I never kind <laughs> of, right. <laughs> I had you know, I, struggle too, so, uh... you know, I never believed that Mary was a virgin. Right. I never believed that Jesus was dead for three days. Never, never, never in my entire life. Right. It doesn't make any, there is no repeatable evidence that that ever happened right. to anybody else. So that's kind of, you know, I was really dismissive of all of that sort of thing. So, so the traditional religious beliefs that you had been raised with, you were mm. rejecting those. those. Those did not work for you. No, right? exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So I really... Uh, and also I was really struggling with this whole, you know, you hear in AA a lot of, you can believe anything you want, you know, God can be a doorknob or a tram or whatever. You can believe whatever you like, but it better be God. You know, anything you like, anything at all, but it better be God. Or you can believe that for now, that's adorable, but eventually you'll come to see 
yes. that it's God. And it just didn't feel true for me ever. Um, and so I was kind of going along sort of faking my belief in that stuff, but it just never felt true. So whenever I had a crisis, I was left flailing yes. without anything that made sense to me because mm -hmm. I've been really good. So where is God now? Right, right. And, you know, look at the sacrifices I've made. There's no God here. Like I am such a good person. It's ridiculous. And so why am I suffering? And, um, you know, I started to, uh, I had a nervous breakdown at 13 years sober and I was really stuck there. And at a, in that nervous breakdown, I was introduced to another 12-step program, Adult Children of Alcoholics. Yes. Life changing. This whole, you know, I was introduced to the concept of, you know, the inner child and the inner loving parent and the inner critical parent. And, um this was sort of a real life changing experience for me. And it kind of reconnected me as well with some of my earlier Buddhist beliefs, mm -hmm. which, you know, I love Buddhists because they don't believe in God. So, um, so it changed the way I meditated. And then uh, six months ago, a friend of mine who's also an atheist said, Kim, I think you should listen to this guy, Father Bill W., He's a priest, but don't be put off by that. He does this thing called two-way prayer. I think you will love it. And um, so because my friend who's an atheist suggested it, I was really open to it. Uh -huh. And I listen, and pretty much right away I was like, oh, this is like, this is like having learning to, you know, that conversation you have, you're in a child and in a loving parent. And then I started listening to your podcast and, um, you know, what this did for me actually is it really cemented my not belief in God, yes. but my real belief in that in a, you know, it says in the big pork, it says, you know, deep down inside every man, woman and child is the fundamental idea of God. I'm like, that's where it is. Like that's where it is. And that's where I feel it. And that's where I hear it. And the voice isn't God's. It's my voice. It's a smarter version of my voice, but it's certainly mine. Well, that's, and, um, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I want to talk for just a minute about uh, Carl Jung. Uh, I, I think you've, you've read some of his work and uh, uh, are attracted to some, some of that way of looking at things. Jung was a yeah. scientist and he never, he said, well, I can't really talk to you about God, that I don't know anything about God, you know, per se. Uh, but but he, he had a term that he called the self with a mm. S. And it's like we experience ourselves with a small s but inside of us is a different self. And, you know, when you sent me the email and you were having this conversation with yourself, yes. I simply translate that into, uh, uh, you know, Kim is having a conversation with her higher self. And yes. her higher self did not want to see you killing yourself. Uh, in, right. Because you would do her in too, <laughs> which is not good, you know. And and I I think the way this concept of of uh, of Jung goes, the, this this inner higher self, is that it is not just my ego, but my potential. Mm. My potential, and and so therefore the the, the all of the things that haven't happened but could, and, and perhaps yeah. could and need to. And it's sort of like pulling us on, onward, you know, almost in spite of ourselves. I was suicidal, you know, in early recovery and, um, and uh, I wanted to kill myself. Well, the question for me became which self? <laughs> you know? Correct. 
yourself. Correct. Yeah. And and the inner child stuff is really wonderful. Uh, uh, that that uh, I certainly want to wouldn't want to kill my inner child because he is beautiful and innocent and sweet, and and he is the best part of me, just like yours is the best part of you. You know. Correct. Yeah, and you want to relate to to that. There's a, you know, there's a, <laughs> there was a professor at Harvard, a uh, short story here, who uh, he, he had to teach a co course on theology. And, um, and it was a big, big class every year, You'd get uh, three or 400 people, kids. And uh, he'd say at the beginning of the, of the course, how many people in here believe in God? And half the hands would go up. And how, how many don't? The other half uh, would go up. He said, I have an assignment for you. For the ones who don't believe, I would like, if you would, if you would stop by my office sometime during the term and tell me about the God you don't believe in. Mm. Describe the God you don't believe in. And, and invariably, what he would always wind up saying to the kids who did that was, well, I don't believe in that either. I, would, mm. I wish the program had said, rather than God as we understand God, I wish it had said God as we don't understand God. <laughs> because what yeah. I was describing was like the great reality is within. And that's true. And for me, that is who God is, the great reality. Mm. Within, without, and then so. <laughs> that's the way I, I would describe it. But I don't understand God. And I wasted an awful lot of time in AA thinking that I had to. That's a real mm. misrepresentation of what the whole Oxford group thing was. They had, they had an expression, turn as much of yourself as you understand over to mm. as much of God as you understand. And what they really meant by that is, and kid, you don't understand either one. Mm. <laughs> We don't understand ourselves. We don't understand uh, God. At least the Jews have the, the the wisdom to not even say the word. It's you know, it's uh, it's it's so sacred, so holy. But uh, you know, if I ask people, do you believe in the holy? Do you believe in something sacred in life? In in my God, I'm looking at you right now. You're you're in a nature preserve there. You know, I am. I am. This is where I work. And I'll bet you when you are there, you are in connection with something. Absolutely. Um, I think, you know, having having this sort of realization that, you know, whatever it is, the power is oh. something inside of myself. And, you know, whether I hear it as that loving parent's voice, um, you know, what it does is it actually, it really gives me conscious contact. Before I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really having any conscious contact because I was sort of praying kind of vaguely to some, you know, mystical, magical concept of something that was outside of myself. Right. Um, so there was no conscious, there was no, it might've been conscious prayer, but there was no contact because there was nothing, I wasn't making contact with anything, you know, other than a, you know, just a really vague, abstract sort of concept. So, whereas in this process, you know, with that conversation that I experience, it's conscious and it's contact because it's a two way process, which is, you know, that's what the two-way prayer is. It's a two-way process. It's a, it's a conversation. Yes, yes. Uh, with, with the most loving part of you, whatever that is. Yes. That, that wants the best for you. Mm. Yeah. And in the process of, you know, learning how to do this two-way prayer, what has happened is that in a loving voice has become 
you know, I've become really conscious of it. I, I hear it all the time. I can go to it very quickly if I need some support throughout my day. And yeah. that critical voice that, that maybe people call it, you know, my disease talking to me or whatever, that critical, you know, you're not good enough. Who do you think you are? Who are you kidding? It's, it's really quiet. It's, it's really hardly evident at all now. So, you know, that's a, you know, what a blessing that is. Right, right. Well, you know, I'm so happy to know that, um, and then just, uh, um, <laughs> so I, uh, I have a confession to make. Uh, I am a priest, so let me, let me confess. Here, here I go. I really have an easier time talking with people who, uh, you know, who have their doubts, their disbeliefs. Uh, the, the hardest people I have to talk to or people who think they know. They think right. they know. You know, and I think that's, uh, that's one of the things that uh, uh, really turns so many people off from, uh, from faith and religion. And that sort of thing. It's like, well, we have the answer, you know. Well, no, they don't, you know. <laughs> they, 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 have some directions and uh and, and a lot of experience but um answers i don't know i don't know about that i had a kid mm -hmm. you know i really loved the kid he, he was always in trouble he came to see me in the office i was the treatment director and he said well i don't believe in god i don't, I don't believe any of this crap you know it's very 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 forthright and honest and, and i said well tell me what you do believe in you know and he said well it's kind of like the force you remember the movie Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. you know, if you're sensitive, if you're sensitive to the great reality, you know when there's a disturbance in the force. You know when something is blocking you from being in right relationship with the force. Mm. It? And, and it's that sensitivity. To me, that's what spirituality is. It's, it's, it's our ability to connect to connect with that which is beyond us, you know, as well as to connect with those who are around us and to connect with that which is my true self inside. You know, it's mm. joining, it's not joining. Uh, so to me, that's, that's where spirituality leads me. Um, but I'm so delighted to, to know that two-way prayer is working for you and you're doing some of the inner child work uh, you know, it was wonderful when you, when you, when you read uh, or, or said what, what God had first said to you uh, almost 20 years ago. He said, sweetie, if I heard you sweetie. right. Yes. Sweetie, that's a term of endearment. Yeah, well, I mean, I would say that she said sweetie because it's my voice. Like, it, I don't hear it. Right. That's right. You know, she, she said, oh, sweetie. Like, yeah, absolutely. It was, and that's why it was like a very clear two-way conversation. It yeah. was not. It was not me just reflecting or ruminating or giving myself a little pep talk. It was not like that at all. It's, um, right. It was a very clear conversation with two very distinct voices. And one was really childish and self-obsessed. And the other voice was really kind and smart and gentle and loving. And, um, you know, certainly at that point. Um, yeah, wisdom, would you say? An inner wisdom. Oh, an inner wisdom completely. Um, and loving. Yeah, and for sure. Beautiful, beautiful. And now what was the sound in, that we're hearing in the background? There? What is, you, said, you said the name, but I didn't know what it is. The sound? Yes, you, there's a, an animal, a bird or something. That oh, it was a goanna. It was a lace monitor. So it's a lizard. It's about two meters long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's singing or it's talking or what's it doing? Oh, no, that's, that's a different bird. That's a, I think that's just a crow, actually. Oh, a crow. That's not, yeah. got it. We're going to have to do better than that, Kim. We have crows mm. over <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's a couple of, there's a couple of other birds I can hear, but the noisy crow is um, um, dom dominating the. All right. It's probably having a carry on about the lizard, so <laughs> as they do. 
Well, listen, I want to really thank you for uh, taking the time to, uh, to visit and to share with us uh, on your spiritual journey. I think it's going to help a lot of people who, uh, who struggle uh, with, uh, with, with the concept of two-way prayer. And you, you've made it uh, really come alive. And, and I'm yeah so thank you and I, I I want to just quickly tell you this very funny story and this is sort of goes back to this whole thing that people in AA do you know believe whatever you like but it better be God um on the weekend I was at like a women's retreat you know AA retreat and I shared at the end that I didn't believe in God and a little bit about my story and um after the meeting was over they had a raffle prize so you know it was like you know you bought raffle tickets at the start of the of the weekend and then there were prizes on offer and I won a cheese board (laughs) so and the funny story is when I arrived and purchased the raffle ticket and you could look at the prizes then and I went oh that cheese board's nice I, I need a new cheese board And that's what I won. And then three separate women came up to me after the meeting and said, see, Kim, you're wrong. God does exist. You won the cheese board. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was that you get a prize. You get a mentality. Yeah. And I really, I mean, I just sort of laughed it off, but, um, you know, it still exists. And I, and I, I, I do hope that, you know we start to see a little less of that in recovery and a little more of um yeah believe whatever you need to yeah believe believe what is love inside of you speaking Mm. you know um i do love the the buddhists uh because their focus is on compassion in every way for mm-hmm. ourselves and for others. And um, it certainly taught me a lot about myself and, and others. Yes. Um, and also really taught me that I am responsible for my suffering. So, um, you know, in my, I'm on the other side of, of the God thing, you know, but my concept of God is that he, he or she or it is with us in the suffering, suffering right mm-hmm. along with you know, and uh, has great compassion for those who don't win the cheese board board thing, you know, (laughs) (laughs) than with the other guy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, I want to thank you again for for, uh, being willing to share a part of your spiritual journey with us. And uh, uh, gosh, have I ever, what part of Australia are you in, if I might ask? I'm in Brisbane in Queensland, so ah. it's, you know, always warm and sunny. You know, it's a wonderful AA down there. Uh, I was uh, honored to speak at the National AA uh, Convention recently, and uh, just some terrific, terrific folks. Uh, I was just blown away by uh, the love, the kindness, and, uh, and the depth of, uh, of, of spirituality um not not the phony kind the real kind the connecting kind yeah yeah thank you okay my dear thank you so much have a great day or great evening i'm going to try and jump on your um workshop on the 14th of december but i will have to get up at 2 a.m so i'm gonna try hey i'll send you the recording don't don't do that (laughs) okay (laughs) okay okay bye 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 see you So I want to thank uh, Kim one more time for sharing her experience, strength, and hope with us. Uh, Has a beautiful story and uh, comes from a really beautiful land down there. So um, just a reminder, if you um, are enjoying these podcasts, please drop me a line and sign up for our newsletter. You can reach me at twowayprayer, T-W-O, twowayprayer at gmail.com. And if you're able to Help us out. We want to film uh, some responses, reactions to people who are doing two-way prayer. And we're going to do that on the 26th of December. Again, if you're under age 40 or anywhere near that, uh, drop me a line, same address, and uh, we'll get back to you and uh, try to have some fun with that. So thank you for listening. God bless. Keep coming back.